Hey there and welcome to Get Indie Gaming and to our first Indie Games Hidden Gems series of the new year. Here I run through five indie games from last year that I loved playing and yet were pretty much overlooked and arguably didn't find the audience they rightly deserve. And first up, retro styled 2D platformers have seen quite the resurgence this past year, with many many of them popping onto mobile and particularly onto the Switch where these games are often great to play while out and about. With this sadly comes a sea of blandness, although Super One More Jump is different than most, by way of only having one interaction. Yep, that's right, all you do is jump, there's nothing else to it. There's no special moves, etc, etc, even the movement is taken care for you. While this sounds nicely dull, the level design is rather superb with all the usual things you would expect to find in such a game. Again, just like other platformers of this type, it's hard to play and that's by design. This of course means success comes to those able to grasp the technique of that one button press to get ahead. All in all, this is one of the better and most hidden precision based platformers I've played for quite some time. Up now and this month's number 4, and while looking like what it is a pure retro themed first person shooter, Dust came along in early January for the PC after a while in early access. It's fast, it's frantic and it comes with 3 campaign episodes all within a low poly garish looking environment. Aside from the campaign, Dusk ships with one of those enemies coming after you wave after wave where you battle until you die, which is as fun to play as anything like it on the market. The addition of an online arena multiplayer is a cracking touch and while this looks so very retro, its use of modern mechanics, a gritty metal soundtrack, the differing weapons each having a solid and weighty feel to them, together with a damn fine implementation of air quotes physics, means it's a set above your average Doom, Quake or other such inspired late 90s shooter tributes. It honestly really is that good. If you haven't played it and you're a fan of the genre, go pick it up as soon as possible. Our number 3 slot belongs to Far Lone Sales. A side scroller featuring a girl within a post end of the world landscape that's free of the usual zombies and other such nasties. You play as a small girl where you begin off at home, don't forget to take that mailbox with you, before setting out on a journey with your hulking landcraft that constantly needs tinkering and playing with during the course of this 4 or 5 hour adventure. As you progress your craft receives upgrades such as a sail to propel you forwards or a giant hoover to easily suck up fuel from outside the craft. With its grey and red colour scheme, it does at times have the air of sadness about it, although come the end it's honestly an uplifting experience. The puzzles, well they're not perfect and sometimes neither is the physics. They are however intuitive and never overly taxing. The standout sections in this game are driven by weather effects, be they dynamic hailstorms, lightning strikes and erupting volcanoes. Coming from a small team, this debut from Okamotive and one that started from a student's project makes this all the more impressive. And on to this month's runner up. Hands up! Who remembers playing these type of marble games such as Super Monkey Ball and Marble Madness on the NES or Sega Genesis a good number of years ago? It can't be just us, surely? Well anyway, Marble It Up looks and plays like a modern take on these cultish classics from yesteryear. The premise remains the same, you navigate your balls around a 3D level and try not to fall off the edge. Naturally enough there are obstacles in your way across the 40 different levels, and that's pretty much it. Sounds easy enough and yet in places it does become devilishly tricky. I played this on the Switch and enjoyed it immensely, it's not just something here for the nostalgia, but something fresh, funny and fun. Our number one indie game hidden gem for January comes in the form of an online persistent survival sandbox cooperative multiplayer. One hour one life from developer Jason Roher begins with you as a baby. You're unable to talk or move where every minute that passes in the game equates to a year in your character's life. 
Unless another player, usually an adult female character, notices the little you and gives you food and warmth, you're killed off fairly quickly. As you might expect, the older you get, the more you're able to take care of yourself. That said, things don't really seem to get that much easier. I've yet to get past the 40 or so minute mark over many, many hours of playtime. One Hour One Life is honestly a beautiful little find and comes with a thriving community where people genuinely seem to be having a good time and the servers are always full with people willing to play. This really was a big surprise. I've enjoyed playing it. It's simple and yet challenging and pretty much unique for what it does. It's also being blessed with what seems to be weekly updates. I'd wager this is one of the most hidden, hidden gems we've had here on the channel. If you've played it, let us know down in the comments, and likewise, if you haven't, go check it out. We think you'll enjoy it. And with that, did you see anything you liked? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and while you're here, hit that like button, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on our thrice weekly indie game videos. You can find all the details for the games, including links down in the description, and with that, Many thanks for watching and we look forward to welcoming you back here soon for more indie game videos.